I've been living in North Carolina all my life, and I've always been a punk fan. It's kind of what I've been raised on. But I haven't really been introduced to punk and North Carolina as a cohesive idea. And so with this documentary, I'm hoping that I can learn more about North Carolina punk and kind of see if it actually is a, a thing out there. To me, it doesn't seem like North Carolina and punk really go hand in hand, so I'm hoping with this documentary I'll be proved wrong. So our group decided to do North Carolina punk, and I feel like this is a really good topic because a lot of people don't realize that there's punk bands out there, especially before the 90s at least. Because everything around here doesn't really base on that genre, it's all country music. So by us going out and filming other punk bands, I hope that a lot of y'all gain knowledge from this just like us. Um, NC Punk in North Carolina, it uh, never really occurred to me. I've, I've been big on alternative rock and listening to music like that, but... The thought of punk in North Carolina it could be possible, could not be possible. I guess we're going to find out. So I don't know too much about North Carolina punk, but what I've seen is it has a very rebellious attitude, which I can directly relate to. I believe I'm going to enjoy NC Punk, and the whole experience is going to be overall great for me. When you think of North Carolina, you don't necessarily think of rebellious music. Since NC's in the South, you think of more like contemporary country. So I think it'll be really interesting to see what we can find in the, the punk genre. I don't know much about North Carolina punk, but I hope to learn more. <laughs> <laughs> I could just read your mind I say I'm paranoid It's got me very because we never played in a band together. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I like writing my own music. And the kind of music I write is, is very aggressive. And so it just fit right in. It was just, yeah, and one of Robin's good friends was in a band called Butch Rex. <laughs> yeah, Mike Dupree. Yeah, and, uh, and they were kind of coming out the Raleigh scene. They got together in 1977, actually. And their moms broke back in. <laughs> Punk for the first time. And I uh, went to see them. They used to have a band called the Cigarettes. Yeah, there were only a handful of people going on back in those days, and, and then uh, and we were out of Durham, and there wasn't really anything going on in Durham back then. There, there was a chap. There wasn't even much of a Chapel Hill scene. There was a Raleigh scene. There was kind of a Chapel Hill scene, and then it, it, the Chapel Hill scene took off. It just really, it really. Well, that was much later. Too. That, was, that, was, that was later. Yeah, but the only places to play was kind of like the pier, where you could see uh, bands. You could see touring bands like Iggy Pop for five bucks. There were some other uh, punk bands that were coming along, but they were younger, younger guys. We were a little bit older than them, and so uh, we were a little more established at the time. But the thing that made the difference in the clubs was the drinking age. Yeah. When we started playing, it was uh, 18. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And we had a big crowd, yeah. young people. We could sell out a club when the drinking age was 18 because our, our crowd liked to drink. Yeah. And then somewhere in the early 80s, the drinking age changed to 21. So the younger bands, they couldn't get any of their fan base into the clubs. Mm -hmm. So they weren't making any money, the clubs. So they had to resort to playing like you know, house parties. They raised the drinking age from 18 to 19. It was 19 for a while, and then they raised it to 21. Uh, and once you raise it to 21, you're, you're losing that whole college crowd. Now all of a sudden they can't go to a bar and drink, so what do they do? They stay on campus and drink and do other drugs and stuff and they don't go to the club. And it, it hurt, it hurt the city, it really did. These punk bands, they weren't very good, the young ones, they didn't know how to play their instruments very well. So when they learned three chords, they wanted to play faster and louder. They could handle that, you know, so the music was getting kind of like that. But, uh, but anyway, so in that transition from 
what we call punk, you know, like Ramones type punk, kind of started transitioning yeah. to a hardcore kind yeah. of punk. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, then that's when the hardcore scene kind of started up in Raleigh. Yeah. With CSC, No yeah. Labels, uh, some of those other bands. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, There's a bunch of them. Stillborn Christians. Stillborn Christians. There you go. That was uh, a crowd pleaser for mom. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, so. You know, some of these uh, clubs, like uh, the brewery, would have a all ages like shows yeah. on, on Sundays. You know, uh, early in the morning they could still have their shows at night to make the money off the beer. Before the yeah. thing broke up, uh, you didn't make a record unless you had like a hundred thousand dollars to make a record. It was going to be slick. And if you think about who was going on back then, who was it? It was the Who and Red Zeppelin. And yes, yeah. And you're listening to like you, you can hear the money in those recordings. It's so good. But, you know, it's very inclusive. Everything got really tight. You weren't making a record unless you got a record deal. FM radio. FM radio. And what happened with punk is it blew all that up. It, everything went lo-fi. And all of a sudden, people like us could make records. Because it didn't have to be perfect. And, and when we were started making records, our first record. that was our first record. <laughs> we, had, we, had no, we had no money. We were, like, so broke. But, we were, able, a month but we were able to make records. And that's what it was all about. And we didn't care. As long as we could make records, we didn't, it didn't matter to us. I don't have any clue where it's going. Right. <laughs> um, there's, uh, I don't know, me and Hunter were talking about it on the way up here. It's, it's, it's really just, uh, it's still all over the place. Mm -hmm. North Carolina's music scene really boomed in the 1950s and 60s. There were tons of R&B, soul, and rock and roll. One of these bands were Doug Clark and the Hot Nut. While they weren't traditionally punk, they definitely embodied the do-it-yourself attitude that is so important to punk. However, the first real punk band would be the Cigarettes, who formed in 1977. The Cigarettes were formed by Throb, Bindi, Johnny Guitar, and Jimmy Jones. They had all played in cover bands before, but decided that they wanted to write their own music. Not much of North Carolina was into their efforts to write their original songs, and the only club that would really pay for them would be the Free Advice. The cigarettes were influenced by Iggy Pop, and they would also throw food and trash at their audience. At the start of the 80s, the cigarettes would break up in New York, all of them going their own separate ways. Johnny Guitar later took up studio engineering and moved to New York City, and recorded with the Bad Brains, MDC, and Reagan Youth. Throb engineered and produced the first Beastie Boys LP. He currently plays in the work, in the work Dogs. Uh, Jimmy Jones McKay followed a similar path, but moved back to Raleigh to start his own studio, which would play an important part in the upcoming hardcore movement. In 1979, a band called Butch Wax was formed. The lead singer, Butch Modern, sang at these shows, but soon found a girl named Molly to replace him. Their first show with the new lineup was with Polysexual and the Suckin' Lions in July of 1980. They played local shows like The Purple Horse and The Brewery, as well as around the state like Cat's Cradle and The Station and also The Attic and Fridays. Then there's the Bad Chicks, a garage slash punkabilly band that is also described as Southern Punkadelic. They formed 1980 by Robin and Clifton Mann and are still playing today with Rock Forbes and Hunter Landon. They were all over NC, playing in all most important punk venues and clubs, and aren't showing any signs of stopping. Darkness, darkness, when it all down.